Hello there, JMB here, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the steering wheel in Croydon as and as because since redefined, the controls have all changed and some people have struggled to set up, connect the wheel, issues with the dead zone in Croydon, and I'm going to explain all of that in this video and clear everything up. So, the first things first is you need the X360 application in which there are a few links in the description on how to download the application. These two main popular tutorials in which are very very useful in installing the application as and as because there are some drivers that you need to download and because I've already downloaded them and it's a bit inefficient for me to go and uninstall them. So these two tutorials, just one of the other, are very straightforward, easy to download and yeah. But once you've downloaded that, um, the next thing you want to do is you have this screen. Now furthermore, we also have Croydon open. So if I made a quick show, Croydon's right here. I don't have my steering wheel connected up right now. Um, this is just keyboard. So this is all from scratch as well. So in order to get this work, we need to first off make sure that our actual device is added on now for me i'm using a logitech this will not work for every single steering wheel that's out there um especially a few logitech ones like the logitech gt series that one doesn't work because it only goes up to 200 degrees so you've got to make sure that your steering wheel actually works because if it doesn't work in general with this application then you are going to be unable to add it onto roblox and connect it up and drive However, the G29 is a main generic popular one that does work. I can confirm that. I've been using this for about good five, six years now. So I can vouch for the G29, the G27, the G920, G923 as well, and any other ones like the Thrustmaster. Whichever steering wheel you have will generically work in here. So once you've added it, if you want to add, just add your controller here. Add your Logitech G29 hub and you connect it. And once you've added it, it should be sharing right there. Now, how do you connect this up? And what, first off, you know, you should know how an Xbox controller works. Everyone knows how a controller works. Everyone's played on PlayStation or on Xbox. But for Roblox, this one has the Xbox 360 because Roblox formerly was only available on Xbox. But now obviously with the PlayStation available, you can probably use the other location like DS4 controller for Windows. But what are the controls for Croydon for their Xbox? Now that I do have here. These are the main controls. Now, what does it mean with tap and what does it mean with hold? Now for the tap one, that means you have to tap it once and that control will turn on. And for holding, you have to hold down your specific button in order for it to work. So... For example, if we wanted to use the left indicator, it'd be the left bumper, and we just have to tap it lightly. But if we wanted to use the left mirror, for example, we would have to hold down for this to actually work. So these are the controls for anyone who wants to take a screenshot or use this and don't want to watch the rest of the video. It is here, but that is what we're going to be going off. So for starters, the first one that we're going to direct is the accelerator. So right trigger here, make sure your controller works and all your buttons work and everything. You just need to do this record button and go up. It should naturally go up. Now, when you let go, it should be zero. And when you push yourself down, it should go up to 255. There shouldn't go anything higher than this, um, as every single pedal only goes up to 255. And if you do halfway through, it should be about 128, like such. It's a bit hard to do this on a main... But yeah, you'll see it says I axis too. Don't worry about the names, it shouldn't be too difficult. And for the same for the left trigger, these are the brakes. So do the exact same thing, press down. So those are the two main ones, which will work in Croydon as soon as we go back in the application. Another thing to mention is it's shown here where it says game. Obviously in the tutorial you'll be told to add the Roblox play and install all the Roblox player launcher but for me this doesn't work for me on windows 11 computers i don't know why unless there's a fix for this in which this is the latest version the 2020 version so i just use the x360 controller emulator and this will still connect into roblox as normal there's no issue or anything with this so the next thing we want to do is the 
right indicators. Now the right bumpers here, it's straightforward generically, and I'm gonna use that as my button. So when I click it, this is my bumpers. Beforehand, I believe it was the B key. I do not recall as I use Joy Two key with the steering wheel to play corridor another thing i do want to mention as well is you can no longer use joy to key alongside x360 ce if you did use that beforehand which i was definitely fine of using you can't use x360 controller emulator anymore inside the with joy to key encoded now they brought out some new updating which is specifically for the controller so this maps out all the controls for your controller and that's everything that's necessary so if you want to use the horn and the assault alarm which actually do not work right now in with the controls even though if you look on the screen it will show you the control is the left trigger you will have to use joy to key but there will be a bit of interference when switching between joy to key and x and x360 controller emulator the next one the left indicator so well, if i hold this one this will be the left mirror in Croydon and if I hold the other one sorry the left I hold the right one now I hold the left one this will also be the left mirror but tapping is left control left indicator um yes these don't work side by side so if you do hold it will do the right mirror and it won't do the indicator but obviously tapping quickly will do the indicator the other controls um the Y button now these are our hazards which is really good because I believe hazards should be as always should be white button so white button there is your hazards but you do have to hold down for hazards uh tapping only does the flashlights it flashes the headlights but holding down does do the hazards and then the front doors and rear doors this is straightforward x button this one is just a tap there's no holding for this so it's just a normal tap uh, same for the b button for the rear doors just front and left tap like that now the steering wheel now the turning you want to use the stick x-axis so now you'll see here it has a red arrow you want to turn to the right and this is how you map your steering wheel so now mine works and you'll see this pop up like stick x and stick right you can necessarily if you wish to do this but it will still map on the stick x-axis as this is automatically for this so once you've set that that's all you need to do you don't need to do the stick y-axis as this yeah you don't, all this is the only thing you need to do on top of this you want to set up the rest of your controls for the parking brake now the parking brake is d-pad up i do not know why it's d-pad up but i suppose this is useful so d-pad up if i do this now you have to be careful like i use a shifter for the parking brake as i've always used since seven years ago but if you hold down the logitech shifter and you put it in a position for too long it will recognize that it's holding the button so it will turn off your bus so you have to be careful when putting on the parking brake now obviously with opening the doors the rear doors as well they automatically put the parking brake on so the only time you ever need to put the parking brake on is you know when you're parking the bus at west Croydon, for example or at a traffic light if you really want to but other than that you generally don't need to use the parking brake but yeah the engine off is all well, holding it down then you do have to let go and then we let it on again to turn it back on and yeah it's straightforward d-pad down now this one is for kneeling um for kneeling i think that's button will work so kneeling this will kneel down holding does do the ramp so if you want to take dog on hold this down tend not to do that usually because I don't really want to take dog and I know there's a creating bug where multiple versions of dog spawn now so I do believe it's ideal to either pick up dog at the beginning of your route if you want to take him on or if you decide not to don't take him on at all for the remainder of the journey because there is a bug where for every single stop you haven't picked up dog and when you put the ramp down and your radar's open it will then take all the previous dogs and yeah they'll sit down um yeah and then there's another one which is d-pad left now this one technically it's unnecessary because you know you won't really need it but this one is for for the cameras so if you want to go in the first camera mode um, i'll actually change this my button to this one so if you do want to go into the camera mode 
the cab control like it's first person then you just click it once if you're not already in the first person and then to go in third person you click it again so this is ideally between first and third person this doesn't do all the rest of the camera control so you know going upstairs behind the bus and the yeah all the other camera controls the mirrors and everything this doesn't do that this only does the first person and third person which is on keyboard number one and then for third person number two so it's really cool to switch between these and these are all you need that is everything you need there's nothing more that you need to do you can just save all and then if we go back into roblox roblox will automatically it should automatically register and if we have a look um you can see now when i'm turning my steering wheel you can see that the steering wheel isn't like smooth and the reason because you need to go into your settings and you need to turn off non-linear gamepad steering what is this for now the non-linear gamepad steering means it allows for controllers with like actual controllers to move to the left move to the right but move smoothly then instantly because if you do linear gamepad it means it follows the position of your actual whatever you're using your left thumbstick your right thumbstick so yeah now one thing you can see here is when you're turning i'm turning my steering wheel about 45 degrees and it's not turning like if i show you there like i've got mine about 30 degrees 45 degrees and it only turns from there and if you see you want to see input as well this that i'm not making this up the actual now this shows you the in I wouldn't say degrees, but in terms of X360 placement, where your steering wheel is, obviously you can see myself moving 2,000 feet, my steering wheel is so I'm going into about 40 degrees here, still nothing, but when I make past 3,600, this is when the thing starts turning, as you can see. Why is that? Now, in Croydon, they have a dead zone right now, so obviously if you have a steering wheel issues, you have a dead zone now. So with this dead zone, it causes this to ignore the first 90 degrees of your steering wheel which which is a plus or minus 45 degrees if you use it on an actual x axis now how can you fix this because obviously if i'm turning it will turn a bit too quickly and then me turning around i'd have to move all the way around and it's just annoying now in x360 ce the application if you go over to the left thumb this is where your steering wheel or your x-axis is plotted now you can see as i turn my wheel it plots the thing this is the direct x control so this is what direct x plots it you can see it plots it from zero all the way to 65535 um obviously being that there's 65536 values and you can see here on the xi it shows 32767 go back it goes to minus 32768 what does this mean how can this work and how can you fix this now as you can see if i go to about 3000 what would we say 3600 you can see that it doesn't turn but when you move it it goes there this is because this plots in the 10 percent dead zone so between the first 45 and minus 45 degrees there'll be the wheel won't turn and it will only register after that degree now if you want to eliminate this so that your wheel does not have this dead zone then we have an anti-dead zone option which is right over here now on the top you can see we have the number here and the percentage now the percentage you want to get to is 10 percent now you have to look at every single game statistic now i know Croydon did mention that theirs is 90 degrees and this is based off a 900 degree steering wheel so obviously 90 over 900 is 10 percent but how can you turn it up to 10 percent because entering 10 doesn't actually do anything as i told you here you have your value here 3 of 32,767 divide this value by 10 or times it by 10 percent you'll get 32,000 3,000 sorry 3,276.7 in which rounds up to 32,777 so when you do that that means the anti-dead zone will be here now as you can see your green dot is what the real steering wheel, your real steering wheel is doing. Your blue value here is your dead zone. So as you can see, this is up at 
but as soon as you hit that 45 degree angle in game so it doesn't register after the 45 degrees or the 10 percent dead zone it'll go instantly down here so if i map this out in quick now i turn and it's smooth so this works for every single wheel i believe you do have to check but this will work for every single wheel so that is everything you should need i don't believe there are any more controls that you need to worry about so if i hold down the hazard button flash the hazard button does work indicators doors um rear doors and yeah you also can't use your mouse when you're using a controller so that is one issue but yeah the steering wheel should work now your steering wheel won't have any dead zone obviously if you remove that dead zone or you delete the application reinstall it and your settings aren't saved then you're obviously going to have to reinstate that 10 percent anti-dead zone but once that anti-dead zone is done it should all work and acceleration will all work and it also work in terms of mapping your actual accelerator handbrake but if i put it too hard it will turn off the bus as such turn it on as well if that works fire system pressure as okay such. um but yeah the only issue that i have is the horn and the assault alarm don't work and this is where you have to go to the joy to key get your actual wheel and for your button now it depends on which button you have but g is the assault alarm and the h is your horn so i currently already have mine set up you can quick tutorial you need to do that with my assault alarm and my i do not recall what my assault alarm is actually uh this is my assault alarm as well but if let's say i was driving and you can see my wheel is being mapped but if i want to click the horn Oh, I think they have to stay. Nope, there we go. You can see there's a bit of a stutter. So, that is an issue that needs to be fixed, obviously. I don't know if that will be fixed, but yeah. That is generally on how to connect up the steering wheel to Croydon. Um, there's not anything else you don't need to. As you can see on the screen to your right, you can see that the right trigger and left trigger is for this, but this doesn't work. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, hope this answers all your questions about how to set up the steering wheel um, the links for everything will be down below and yeah if you do want to have one more last look at the steering wheel controls they're right here um, yeah thank you for watching and have a good rest of your day thank you